All right, guys, we're back. Got the fenders and everything lined up. Got the headlights and everything knocked out. Uh, we're gonna finish the bumper real quick. As you can see, it is uh, not very happy. It's not lining up at all, but we're gonna fix that. But anyway, here we go. All right, guys, I'm uh, going to show you real quick what's going on with the, the front bumper. Um, it's kind of one of the things that it's kind of like a pain about letting your stuff sit around. It sits around and kind of gets all bent out of shape because, you know, your bumper, it's just really thin plastic. So um, when it's on the car, it's all supported, so it doesn't really sag and droop and stuff like that. But if you sit it on a flat surface like mine was, um, so basically it was just sitting, you know, with the nose up. And it basically, you know, over time it just kind of sagged down, so it kind of spread it, you know, sp spread the bumper out. But anyway, same with the fenders. The fenders, you know, they used to be supported, they have them sitting on flat ground, so they kind of got twisted up. This thing had like perfect gaps and stuff like that. I worked on it forever to get it perfect before I tore it apart to put everything on it, and it sat around for so long. But it, they lined up pretty good, it's all right. But. The gaps are not too bad, but they're definitely not perfect. I'll continue working with them as we go on. But we'll get it back looking pretty good. The doors are okay though. Look alright. Yeah, so pretty much the front bumper was sitting like on these corners and it just it's you know made the bumper spread out right here. But you know it is what it is. We can fix it. I don't even care. Like I said, I'm going to get the 99 front bumper for this thing eventually. But for, my, for the time being, we got to get this thing looking somewhat decent. But I'm pretty much just going to take a heat gun and add some heat to this thing and kind of work it back in. Because as you see, it's, it's, it's so far out of whack. It is crazy. That's never going to line up. This side over here is way worse. I mean, look at that. That is crazy how much this thing flattened out. That's another reason why it's just not a good idea to let your project car sit, because stupid stuff like that happens. Then you're doing the work twice. So, I'm going to get the heat gun, kind of heat this thing up and try to work it back in to get it looking somewhat presentable. And uh, I'll show you all the end result and everything. And we'll go from there. So. Okay, like I said, we got the heat gun and... Uh, I guess I'm just going to like heat it in this general area right through here and try to work it in and see if it'll actually straighten back up. But it was worse than this. Like I said, it's been sitting overnight and all day while I was at work. But hopefully this will get it, you know, at least lining up halfway decent. Yeah, just going to kind of heat it. I don't want to stay in one spot too long because like I said, it'll definitely melt your bumper. Oh man, I'm gonna have to sit you guys down so I can put some pressure and heat and all that kind of stuff, but I'll be back in one second. All right, well, this is what we got so far. It's not too bad, especially down here, it lined up okay. Up here, it's got it's pretty bad, and I did exactly what I told you not to do and got a little carried away. You can see it kind of cooked the paint a little bit, but it's gotta be painted again, anyways, it doesn't matter. And that right there, look at that. Oh, jeez. That's horrible. But I'm pretty sure I can heat that up and get most of that out. But look how bad that thing's off. That's ridiculous. That's pretty bad. But yeah, I'm going to keep working at it and see if we can just slowly and surely work our way into a somewhat decent fitment. 
Not too bad. You can kind of see where it like it looks like it made a little brown right there, kind of discolored a little bit. I ain't got a little too carried away with the heat. Still gotta try to fix all those waves and stuff right there. Like I said, this is not gonna be a track or a show car, so you know it is what it is. From where this thing come from, it's doing pretty good. This is the stuff for the nitrous. So I gotta get that wired up to a, a little panel. Still got that monster truck ride height. We'll fix that later. I'm not worried about it right now. That makes life easy when you gotta jack your car up, so we'll let it be a monster truck for a little while. But man, has this thing come a very, very long way. But yeah, I'm gonna play around this a little bit more, see if I can get it a little bit better. And then uh, I'll show you guys what we come up with. All right, guys, got the FD behind me. Um, you missed a lot with the brake master cylinder. We ran into a little bit of problem. Um, I didn't read when I was looking on the form about the 929 brake master cylinder for the FD. And uh, apparently like one of them is a banjo and one of them takes a regular fitting. And I ended up breaking the banjo off in that thing. So that kind of irritated me. <sighs> so I took that back. Thankfully my local parts store took that back with the broken banjo <laughs> bolt in it. But we do have brakes now. So I got them straightened out. I flip around and roughly explain what I got going on. But I'm gonna let y'all see the FD, all the parts and everything on it. Looks really good, but we're about to load it on a trailer and go have the roll cage put in it finally. So, buddy's gonna help me out with that. So I'm pumped on that so we can get everything painted and finally put this thing together, so. But here we go, take a quick look at it real quick. I'm not gonna explain too much on the brakes right now, but we do have brakes. I gotta get a, a reservoir for the clutch. Um, I'll probably just pick up one for a CBR like I did for the 350Z. But we got the headlight covers on. Got the lights on. Like I said, it actually looks like a car now. We get the cage in, glue the front window in, glue the back glass in. Do the I'm gonna do bed liner in the inside of the car and the engine bay, so I finally get to do that. But it's coming along. I kind of straightened up some of my wiring, which I'm going to take all this stuff out so he can put the cage in. But I still got to figure out what I'm going to do for a uh, what kind of fuse box I'm going to run and how I want the relays to be and stuff like that. Make a panel for my switches and my my you know main cutoff and all that stuff. But I don't think I had that in another video. But I got the. The main power going to the battery and stuff i've got that kind of sorted out and ran somewhat nicely but yeah i'm gonna put you on the tripod real quick load the car up i got like one or two things i'm gonna take off like the the glass maybe the hood stuff like that that thing's just gonna get in the way and uh we head to my buddy's shop and drop this thing off so all right guys, we got loaded on the trailer. Of course, my camera cut off, so you missed all of that. Or I didn't cut it on, either one, I don't know. But anyway, we got loaded up. We're gonna take the back glass out of the hatch just so it don't blow out going down the road. And uh, we're gonna get on the road and drop this thing off. So get this done real quick. All right guys, we're back at the house. I apologize, I didn't film very much, but uh, yeah, it's just been, uh, it's been, you know, just one of those days. Just trying to get everything done and uh but the car is my friends, so hopefully he's gonna knock the cage out for me and we can get this thing finished up. But I'm more out. I'm gonna go to the house and crash, get some sleep. Maybe tomorrow we can uh pull the Montego car over here to the awning and uh get the motor out and start working on that thing a little bit while the V eight car is out of the picture. 
But that's it for now, guys. Like always, appreciate y'all watching. And uh, we'll see you on the next one.